Hi, Daddy. Do you have any idea what time you might be able to make it home tonight? Well, sweetheart, it looks like it's going to be a long day at the office. I have a lot of work to finish and some meetings to attend. I'll probably be wrapping up and heading home around 7 p.m. Why do you ask? Oh, nothing much. Just that I thought I'd take over the kitchen duties tonight. I'm planning on cooking up some chicken breasts and baked potatoes for dinner. Really? That sounds fantastic. Chicken breasts and baked potatoes are my absolute favorite. You know how much I love them. Yes, I know. We had a cooking lesson in our home economics class at school today. The teacher taught us how to make them. And guess what? She said mine were the best in the class. She said they were juicy, tender, and flavorful. So I thought why not make them for dinner tonight? That's wonderful, Jenny. I'm really looking forward to tasting your cooking. If it's as good as you say, maybe you can take over the kitchen more often. You know I'm not very good at cooking, and mom is always busy with work. Well, just a heads up, if you don't finish everything on your plate, I might get a little upset. I've put a lot of effort into this. I've even prepared a salad and a dessert to go with the main course. Oh, don't worry about that at all. I'm sure it's going to be delicious. And I'm very hungry right now, so I'll probably eat everything you make. By the way, isn't mom going to be home for dinner tonight? No, she mentioned this morning that she has to work late again and won't be able to join us for dinner. She said she has an important project to finish and a deadline to meet. Oh, I see. I wasn't aware of that. Well then, I'll try my best to wrap up here as soon as possible and head home. See you in a bit. Okay. Can't wait for you to try my cooking. I hope you like it as much as I do. <coughs> Kayleen, are you there? Huh? What is it that you need? I'm currently swamped with work. I have a lot of deadlines to meet and a lot of reports to write. Kaylin, are you planning on working late again tonight? Yes, I am. Is there a problem with that? Kaylin, remember our conversation last night? You promised me that you'd try to come home early today. We agreed that we should try to minimize the time Jenny spends alone at home. Did I say something like that? I don't recall making such a promise. Besides, there's not much I can do about it. It's work. Working moms are always busy. That's not a valid excuse, Kaylin. We're both busy. We had a discussion about this just the other day. We agreed that we need to be more present in Jenny's life. She needs our attention and support, especially at this age. What? Are you trying to paint me as the villain here? That's not my intention, Kaylin. We made a mutual decision to try harder for Jenny's sake. You've been working a lot of overtime these past few months. And you've been delegating household chores to Jenny too, haven't you? She's still in junior high. She should be focusing on her studies or spending time with her friends, not doing laundry and cooking dinner for us. What's the big deal? If you're so concerned about Jenny being alone and doing housework, why don't you quit your job and stay at home? And have us all live off of your income? You're a temporary worker, Kayleen. Your income isn't stable enough to support us all. You don't have any benefits or security in your job. Oh, so now you're looking down on me because I'm a temp worker? You're such a hypocrite! You were the one who encouraged me to get a job in the first place. And now that I have one, you're still not satisfied? You're impossible! I'm not looking down on anyone, Kayleen. You suggested that I quit my job and I'm just explaining why that's not feasible. And let's not forget that you don't contribute any of your earnings towards our family expenses or bills. If I were to stop working, we wouldn't be able to maintain our current lifestyle. We'd have to cut back on a lot of things. Well, raising a child is hard work, and being a temp worker was the only option I had. 
Maybe if you quit your job and stay home, I could find a stable full-time job and support us. Well, anything is possible. There's something I've been meaning to tell you. A woman doesn't want to be financially dependent on her man. She wants to be able to support herself financially. That means I don't want to be stuck at home having you dictate what I can and can't buy because of our budget constraints. I want to earn my own money and spend it on whatever I want, whether you approve or not. You need to understand that. I'm not quitting my job just so I can stay home with Jenny. Okay, Kayleen. I understand where you're coming from. My main concern was for our daughter's well-being. If you want to continue working late and aren't able to be home when Jenny is there, then we'll have to figure out another solution. Maybe we can hire a babysitter or ask one of our relatives to look after her. Oh, there's something else I need to tell you. You know the debate competition Jenny has been preparing for this week after school? Well, there was a scheduling conflict with the basketball tournament, and they had to move her debate competition to next week. Next week? That might be difficult for me. I'll have to rearrange some things. I already requested the afternoon off for this week, but I don't know if I can do it again for next week. Let's not mention this change in schedule to Jenny until we're sure whether or not we can make it. It would break her heart if we weren't there for her debate competition. Let me see if I can rearrange my schedule at work. I should know by Friday whether or not it'll be possible for me. Don't worry. Even if you can't make it, one of us will be there for her. She'll have someone there cheering her on. Okay then. If her debate isn't this week, then I guess I'll tell my boss that I won't need the afternoon off after all. Hopefully, someone will be able to cover for me next week. Okay. We won't mention anything about this change in schedule to Jenny until we're sure. Dad, where are you at this moment? I've been searching for you everywhere. Right now? I'm still at the office, sweetheart. Is there something you need from me? Don't worry, I'll make sure to be home in time for our dinner together. Whatever. I can't believe you would just cancel our plans without even having the courtesy to inform me. What are you talking about? I'm really upset with you right now. I don't even want to see your face anymore. What? Jenny, what happened? Did I do something that upset you? Can you tell me what it is that I did wrong? Jenny, are you still there? Jenny, please talk to me. I'm worried about you. Is Jenny at home right now? I was hoping to have a chat with her. No, she's not. Why do you ask? Well, earlier today, Jenny sent me a message saying that she hates me. It's left me quite perplexed. Did I do something to upset her? Maybe. I'm not entirely sure, but you know how teenagers are. They're at a rebellious age where the smallest things can set them off. I don't think you should worry too much about it. It might be best to give her some space for a few days and let her cool off. I'm not so sure. I feel like it might be better if I talk to her and try to understand what's bothering her. Trust me, that might just end up making things worse. She's not going to appreciate her father prying into her personal manners. I understand how girls her age feel. Let's just give her some space for a few days and let me handle this, okay? Maybe you're right. Alright then, I'll leave it up to you. Good, I'll take care of everything. For now, just keep your distance from her. And don't worry about her debate competition either. I'll be there for her so you don't have to. In fact, given the circumstances, it might be better if you didn't attend. If you think that's best. It's not uncommon for children to say things they don't mean in the heat of the moment. Don't take it too personally. I suppose. It's just that she's never said anything like that to me before. Well, maybe she's been holding it in for a long time. Maybe she's been feeling neglected and unloved by you. Or she's been resenting you for always being busy with work and never spending time with her. That's not true. I love Jenny more than anything in the world. 
I work hard to provide for her and give her a good life. I always try to make time for her whenever I can. Well, maybe that's not enough for her. She needs more than just material things from you. She needs your attention, affection, guidance, and support. But I do give her those things. I always listen to her when she talks to me. Really? What? What are you talking about? Jenny, what do you think about going for a drive tonight? Just you and me. It's been a while since we've had some quality time together. Just the two of us. We could use this opportunity to catch up and talk about anything that's on your mind. No, I don't feel like it. Jenny, I've noticed that you've been avoiding me these past few days. I'm not sure why, and it's really bothering me. If I did something to upset you, I want to make it right. Can you at least tell me what's wrong? I'm here to listen. It's about my debate. You never came to see it. You said you'd come. You promised. Huh? Your debate? But isn't your debate scheduled for next week? No, it's over. What? Are you serious? Your mom told me it was rescheduled to next week. It wasn't rescheduled. Jenny, I'm so sorry. It's not just that. You told mom that I'm ugly and stupid, didn't you? Mom's friend told me you said it. What? Jenny, I would never say anything like that. You're the most beautiful girl in the whole world. And I know you're smart. That's why you were chosen to join the debate. Everyone knows you're smart. You're just saying that to make me feel better. And I know you stole some of my favorite clothes from my closet. What? Why would I do that? Why would you think I would do any of those things? Jenny, you know how much you mean to me. But... So, it wasn't you? Sweetie, I would never do anything like that. And you didn't say I was ugly and stupid? I never said that. I swear. Anyway, Jenny, I'm so sorry. I missed your debate. I feel terrible. It's not next week? It's really over? Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know how this mix-up could have happened. I should have been there for you. I really wanted to go and watch you. I swear. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry too. So, sweetie, who was it that said I was saying bad things about you? Which one of mommy's friends? The guy that mom brought to my debate with her. Huh? I didn't know who it was, so I felt really strange when I saw him with her. And after the debate, the three of us went out for dinner. And her friend was acting like he had known me for a long time. He was way too friendly. It was kind of creeping me out. Was it someone you know? No, that was the first time I'd ever seen him. I see. How about we talk more about all of this tonight? And let's not tell mom about our conversation, okay? Okay. Let's go out for dinner. We haven't done that together in a long time. That sounds like a great idea. I'll be leaving the office in a few minutes. See you soon. Okay. That night, Jenny told me a bunch of things my wife had been doing. Most of what she told me were things that I didn't think should be coming from the mouth of a junior high student. Jenny and I agreed that we'd continue on with our daily lives for a little while as if nothing had happened. Just long enough for me to figure out what we should do next. During that time, my wife messaged me about a parent-teacher interview she had to go to on a Sunday. I guess she thought that Jenny was still upset with me and not speaking to me. She told me that she'd go to the meeting with Jenny and suggested that I go and visit my parents that day to take my mind off of Jenny and the parent-teacher interview. That's just the opportunity I was waiting for to put my plan into action.
I'm currently at my parents' house. How are things on your end? Is everything going well? Everything's going well here. The parent-teacher meeting isn't scheduled until later this afternoon. We're just taking it easy at home and watching some TV. It's a nice change of pace. Wait, did you say you're at home? I thought you might be out somewhere. Yes, why wouldn't I be? I'm just enjoying a quiet day at home. Oh, I see. So you're living in a hotel now? That's news to me. I must have misunderstood something. What are you talking about? Why would I be living in a hotel? Well, to be honest, I'm not actually at my parents' house right now. I'm downtown. And guess what? I saw someone who looks exactly like you. She even went into a hotel with a man I've never seen before. She seemed really happy and excited. Maybe she had a double espresso this morning to kickstart her day. That's... interesting. But I'm sure you're mistaken. It must have been someone else who looks like me. Are you sure? Because she's wearing the same suit you said you were going to wear to Jenny's parent-teacher interview today. The exact same dark blue blazer. The guy looked pretty dressed up too. I wonder if she's planning on going to the parent-teacher interview right after leaving the hotel. If it was you doing that, I'd be really upset. I've already told you that's not me. You're obviously mistaken. It must have been someone else. Hmm, but I'm really curious to find out. If it's not you, then maybe you have a long-lost twin. If that's the case, I don't want to miss this opportunity to reunite you two. So I think I'll just wait outside the hotel until she comes out. Okay, okay. You want me to come out and say it, don't you? Yes, I'm cheating on you. Who cares? Sorry. You admitted to that a lot faster than I thought you would. Well, I couldn't stand your indirect accusations anymore. You're always so annoying. That's probably why Jenny hates you so much, too. By the way, I'm leaving you and moving in with my new boyfriend. What? What are you talking about? Exactly what I said. At first, I was going to make you take Jenny, but my boyfriend said he'd feel sorry for her if she wasn't with her mom. So, he figured it'd be better if Jenny came to live with us. Is that really what Jenny wants? Of course. She doesn't want to live with you at all. Well, Jenny is the one who told me that you'd likely be with that guy today. What? Do you really think I'm that naive? A parent-teacher meeting on a Sunday afternoon? That's quite unusual, don't you think? And by the way, Jenny mentioned that the guy you're with was trying a bit too hard to be nice to her. It was making her uncomfortable. What are you talking about? And she also mentioned how overly affectionate you were being with him. You were trying too hard to get Jenny to like him. She could tell that neither of you were acting like yourselves, especially you. Ugh, that ungrateful child. Kids aren't as naive as you think. They can see right through someone when they're being insincere. Whatever. You and Jenny can do whatever you want. I'm leaving both of you. If you want, you can sue me for compensation money. I don't care. My boyfriend will pay it for me. He's wealthy, so it won't affect him at all. You know, I don't think that guy is really interested in you. What are you talking about? Jenny told me that some of her clothes have gone missing from her room. Have you been inviting that guy over to our house? Yes, he's been over. But her clothes are missing? Jenny's clothes? He's the only person I can think of who would take them. Don't you think that might be why he was so insistent about Jenny moving in with you two? No, no. He's not like that. Why don't you just ask him? He's in the same room as you right now, isn't he? Hello? Are you still there? He left. What happened? When I told him that after we divorce, I was going to have Jenny live with you instead of me. He said, 
well then there's no point in any of this, and just left. Is that so? That's hilarious. Did that really just happen? Oh, some guy looking really upset just left the hotel. That must be him. Don't worry about it. Hey, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I literally just sent you a message. No, I mean, are you still standing in front of the hotel? Yes, why do you ask? I'm in room 405. Why don't you come up here? What are you talking about? I'm sorry for all the harsh things I said to you earlier. I've realized now that I was wrong. I promise not to behave like that again. Can we talk this over? That's not possible right now. So just hurry up and get down here. Why not? It wasn't my fault. He deceived me. I had no idea he was that kind of person. You're only saying that because now you know he wasn't really interested in you. But he promised me the glamorous life I've always wanted. How could I resist such an offer? He lied to me. He's the bad guy, not me. You can't blame me. Any girl would be taken in by that. But women don't want to be supported by their man. They want to be able to support themselves financially, right? Shut up. I take back what I said before. I'm not talking about what you said before. That's what the person beside me is saying right now. Your boss at your current temp position. What? I look into it and found out right away. The guy you were cheating on me with is your boss's husband, isn't it? <laughs> I'm down here in the lobby with your boss. We were both here the whole time. She grabbed her husband as he was trying to leave the hotel. <laughs> Just wait. Is she really downstairs? Mrs. Peterson? Yeah, that's why I told you to hurry up and get down here. We're all waiting for you. What? No way. I'm not going down there. You have to do something. There is no getting out of this now. Mrs. Peterson is suing both you and her husband for your affair. Oh, and you can bet that I'll be doing the same. You don't even want to imagine how much this is going to cost you with both of us suing you. <laughs> but you'll have no problem paying for it, right? Because you've been working all that overtime for the past couple months, right? <laughs> After that, Kaylin tried to sneak out a back away, but we had planned for that, and Mrs. Peterson caught her on her way out. Knowing there was no way she could talk her way out of this one, she decided just to bawl like a little baby. <laughs> I don't know why she thought it would work. Neither of us were feeling any pity for her. Instead, I just took that time to contact her parents and tell them why I was going to be divorcing their daughter. They apologized for their daughter's actions and tried to get me to reach a settlement with them instead of taking Kaylee into court for compensation money. But I knew I'd win in court and I knew I'd get a lot more out of her if I did it that way. All those nights, Kaylin said she was working overtime. She was really out with her boyfriend, so she had nothing saved up to pay me with. Because of that, what she owed me was taken out of what I would have to give her in the divorce, so she ended up getting nothing from me. Needless to say, Mrs. Peterson fired Kaylin immediately after catching her with her husband. Kaylin was left with no man, no money, no job, and a big debt she had to pay to Mrs. Peterson. Kaylin had no choice but to move back in with her parents. I don't know what happened to her after that because Jenny and I moved away so that we'd never have to see her again. So, my daughter and I started our new life together, just the two of us. Jenny taught me how to do the laundry and all the other chores around the house. At first, I felt a little stupid having my daughter show me how to do such easy things, but I actually enjoyed the time we spent together as she taught me. She's even agreed to teach me everything that she learns in her home economics class. Every weekend, we make dinner together and we've grown closer than ever. Sometimes the meals don't turn out as good as we wanted, but even those times are fun. Now, dinners with my daughter are the best times of my week. <laughs>